My wife had a very different idea of what we should do. She wanted to move out of the house I lived in for 26 years. I had no desire to move. I said, they're gonna take me out of this house feet first. You know, that's the only way I'm leaving. I think there's a certain amount of bait and switch. Back when we were dating, you know, she'd ride the bus with me and honey made a tofu loaf and we'll go to the environmental rally on the MTA bus. Then the minute that the ring went on the finger, it's like, I want a steak and a limo ride. Don't bother waiting up for me. I'm kidding, of course, but <laughs> I gotta give her a hard time. <laughs> Pineapple Express, curb your enthusiasm, and as far back as St. Elsewhere, Ed Begley Jr. is a longtime actor and sustainability advocate. And today, we get to tour his house. The heart and soul of the property is this beautiful oak tree here. As you can see, this tree is a large, uh, wonderfully mature tree. It's been here for probably 100 years or more. And so the rule was, nobody harms a, a limb of this tree or you're fired. Come inside and let's look some of the, at some of the features inside. Cool. Let me start with the thing that we've got the most lead points for. That's the envelope of the house, they call it. You know, how energy efficient is the home as far as heating and cooling, insulation, and all of that. As you can see here, it's not your four inch thick wall. It's not six, it's not eight or 10. It's 12 inches thick. If you had a rule, you could verify that. And the double pane glass everywhere in the house. It's all double pane glass. Any glass you see to the exterior is double pane. The other big ticket items would be the solar, nine kilowatts of solar to power the house, two big four by 10 solar hot water panels. On the back of the photovoltaic also, I have this black tubing that leads down to the pool and gives extra heat to the pool and in so doing, cools the photovoltaic panels. You want the panels to be cool, they work more efficiently. So what we have is this black tubing in the back that's heating the pool and cooling the panel. It's a twofer that works wonderfully. Here we see the nine kilowatts of solar electric before us, and that's how we get nearly all of our electricity. We buy very little electricity in this efficient home. Switches are part of the Lutron system. This is kind of like the mixing panel of a sound studio. The lighting is all Lutron, lighting controls, and these wonderful Eaton lighting fixtures that are all LED and dimmed properly. All the shade controls work very well with that same system. One more thing I want to show you right here. We also have a system called Act On Demand that has motion sensors. When you walk into the kitchen or any of the bathrooms, the motion sensor turns on a circulating pump in the basement that brings hot water to the tap. As soon as you can get to that tap handle on the hot water side and turn it on, it comes on to nice hot water very, very quickly. You're not wasting a bunch of water waiting for it to get hot at the tap. So it's a very efficient system and it works like a charm. I had never heard of that either. I thought. Thought, you know, is this going to work? It works fantastic. Because in every house I've lived in, even my supposedly energy efficient house of 26 years, you turned on the water, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, 25 Mississippi, 26, oh, there we go, 20 some odd Mississippi, and I've got hot water. All that water is wasted unless you put a bucket in the shower, a bucket in the tub, and not a lot of people want to deal with that hassle. Now, this eliminates all that hassle. All the wood is reclaimed wood from old barns and buildings. Beneath your feet here, you see this wonderful oak flooring. We did not take down any oak trees to make this flooring. It's all reclaimed from old barns and buildings and planed, so it looks beautiful like this. It's got tremendous character, but it's all reclaimed and recycled oak. Hey, did you have to finish it in a certain way? We finished it with wax. We didn't want any urethanes or you know, anything like that, any of those kinds of toxic coatings, so we did a wax coating that's very not, quite non-toxic. The heating and air units are a SEER rating of 20, which is as high as I've ever seen. There's four separate units for four zones, so you can heat it here, cool it there, where people want different temperatures in different parts of the house. You're not wasting energy by heating a whole house because somebody doesn't want to put a sweater on. We have a gray water system that leads out to the fruit trees. There's a switch right now that's on landscape. If somehow we needed to use some chlorine bleach for the clothes or other cleaner that's not safe for the garden, go like this to sewer, and that water would go into the sewer system and not harm your trees. You go right back like this to landscape, and the system is back where it belongs, putting that wonderful gray water out in the garden. We have a rainwater capture system that can store 10,000 gallons of rainwater. It's totally full right now after this rain that we've had. So that spigot right there, you turn that on, you get water not from the Department of Water and Power utility, you get it right from the rainwater tank that's below us. 
All this tile that we're walking on right now has a high post-consumer recycled content, as is the case with the uh, tile in the bathroom, in the kitchen. Anywhere you have tile, it has a very high post-consumer recycled content. A lot of that tile is uh, coming from glass picked up at curbside recycling programs in LA and really? elsewhere. We have a drought tolerant garden front and backyard. I'm growing a lot of my produce on site with a vegetable garden. I compost all my waste. No pesticides, so if you want to try a bite, go ahead. Yeah. Kale. I made these cages because one of the beautiful things, but a, a side effect of having those great oak trees, you have a healthy squirrel population there. So I've never had such a large squirrel population in my backyard. I would recommend that people when considering a green home would look at the cost. Most people look at the cost and they don't want to pay what is sometimes what they view as extra cost, but they're not looking at the whole picture. Most people look at the price of a home by looking at labor and materials. That's understandable, that's what it seems to cost, but there's a bigger cost. Looking at labor and materials is like looking at an iceberg and just looking at a, the piece above the waterline. The huge piece below the waterline is the cost of running that home over decades, and indeed with a steel house like this over hundreds of years. So if you build it right, the cost of running that home, which is part of the cost of the home, is very, very low. Spend a little extra at the get-go, and then you get this long-term benefit of low utility bills. You don't run up Mount Everest. Everybody wants solar panels right away, and I hope anybody that can afford it gets solar panels. But before you do that, do the energy efficiency first. Pick the low-hanging fruit, get the energy-saving thermostat, the energy-efficient lighting, get the weather stripping up, the insulation, Ride a bike of weather and fitness permit. Take public transportation if it's available near you. Home gardening, home composting. All those things in that list are very cheap. Do those first. You will have extra money in your pocket, I guarantee it, because you're going to save money with each of those things. Take that money, then invest in medium ticket items like a solar oven or a rain barrel. Collect your rainwater. You're going to save money in each turn. Pretty soon you're going to be able to afford solar, because nowadays you can get a solar system on your roof for no money down. You don't even have to buy it. They own it. And you just pay them a monthly fee of $72 or something like it, but you save $82 and $92 on your electric bills. You got 20 bucks in your pocket. You got the bragging rights to say, I got the same amount of solar as that idiot Begley and didn't spend a lot of money on it. So we can do it. You just got to do things in the right order. And that takes leadership at the federal level and at the state level. I'm going to make a prediction now. I've been doing this for years. I predict that energy prices are going to go up. I'm amazing. I've been doing that since 1970 and I've been right every year.